I'm going to talk about how to draw Lewis structures and give some examples of drawing Lewis structures. But first, let's talk about what a Lewis structure is. A Lewis structure is a visual way of showing the arrangement of atoms and valence electrons in a compound or an ion. In Lewis structures, you'll see element symbols, which represent the atoms in the substance. You'll also see lines, and those lines represent shared electron pairs. More specifically, when you see an individual line, that's a single bond, which is one pair of shared electrons. If you see a double line, that's a double bond, and that's two pairs of shared electrons. Or if you see a triple line, that is a triple bond, or three pairs of electrons being shared. Lastly, you'll see dots, and those dots represent electrons that are not shared. Most often those will be in pairs, and we call them lone pairs. Um, you'll see individual dots if there's an odd number of electrons in that substance. One last important thing to note is that Lewis structures are not a 3D representation of a molecule. So when we draw a Lewis structure, we're drawing it flat on a piece of paper, and not all molecules are flat, so they're not all two-dimensional like we're drawing them. And so when they're three-dimensional, we're not getting that perspective from a Lewis structure. Also, even if they are flat and two-dimensional structures, we don't always draw them with accurate bond angles. So we might draw something on a piece of paper with a 180-degree angle when really its angle is like 120 degrees. And so in a Lewis structure, we're just showing the connectivity and where the electrons are not, the angles of things, and exactly how it is oriented. But we can use a Lewis structure along with the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, or the VESPER theory, to help us predict the actual 3D arrangement of that molecule, or even ion. Now I'm going to go through a procedure you can use to draw Lewis structures. If you follow this procedure that I give you, then you'll always get to a valid Lewis structure. It may not be the best Lewis structure, but it will be valid so that you can use it to apply VESPER theory to predict the shape of the molecule, the bond angles, and the polarity. The first step is to determine the number of valence electrons. To do that, you need to add up the valence electrons from each atom in the compound. And we're going to work with only main group elements. And main group elements have the same number of valence electrons as the group number that they're in on the periodic table. So let's say you have a halogen. If you have a halogen, that's in group 7, and so it has 7 valence electrons. Or let's say you have oxygen. Oxygen's in group 6, so it has 6 valence electrons. And so you'll do that for all the atoms in the substance. You'll know, add all of those together. Next, you have to consider, is there a charge? And so if there's a negative charge, then that means that that substance has extra electrons. So that negative charge corresponds to extra valence. So if it has a negative one charge, you add one more valence. If it has a negative two charge, you add two more and so on. On the other hand, if there's a positive charge, then that means you've lost valence electrons, and so whatever the positive charge is, you're going to need to subtract electrons from your valence. If there's a positive one charge, you would subtract one valence from what you've added up. If there's a positive two, you would subtract two electrons from what you've added, and so on. The second step is to draw the skeletal structure using only single bonds. So this is just giving you the basic connectivity of the structure. So you need to determine what's your central atom and what's coming off of it. So most often the structures we work with 
have just one central atom and everything else coming off of it. The exception to that would be when we look at hydrocarbons. Sometimes you'll have a chain of carbons um, or a chain with carbons and oxygens or carbons and nitrogens. Um, that's the only time that we'll look at things that have more than one central atom. So normally it's identify the central atom. And in general, the least electronegative atom is in the center. And you can either look up electronegativity values or a big hint is usually the thing that's written first in the chemical formula is the least electronegative, so that's what's in the center. The one big exception to that is when you have, say, a compound that contains just three atoms, three different atoms. Um, so something like if you have the ion OCN minus, then that's written in the order of bonding. So that one's a little bit odd. But most other things, whatever's written first is your central atom, if it doesn't have more than one, that is. The third step is to add the remaining electrons. So when I say remaining electrons, it's because we've already added some single bonds to connect everything. So those single bonds that we put into our skeletal structure, each one of those counts as two electrons. So you need to take the total number of valence that you added up in step one and subtract what you've used to make your skeletal structure in step two, and whatever remains, you need to add those on as dots. And you're always gonna add them in pairs. You don't add individual electrons unless if you absolutely have to because you have an odd number. So when you add these remaining electrons, it's important that you start by filling octets on outer atoms. And so any of the outer atoms that don't have eight electrons, you're gonna add pairs until you get to eight. So to start with, all of your outer atoms should be single bonded. And so that means you'd need to put three pairs of electrons around each to fulfill their octets. Now, one exception to that would be hydrogen. Hydrogen can only have two electrons, and so it only gets that single bond. You don't add lone pairs around it. But everything else should have those three lone pairs then around it, at least until you run out of electrons. And so a couple things can happen. Either as you're filling octets on the outer atoms, you might run out of electrons before you get everything filled or you might be able to fill all of the outer atoms and then you're out of electrons. Or once you fill the octets on the outer atoms, you might have extra. If you have extra, you add any of the extra to the central atom, no matter if that runs it over an octet. Now we'll focus on things that follow the octet rule. We won't do expanded right now. Um, and so you won't run into that just yet but that is a good thing to keep in mind because when you do have extra, you can't add more than eight to anything unless if it's a central atom, and it does have to be specific ones. The last step isn't always necessary, so I say if any atoms lack an octet, then shift lone pairs to fix it. So that's only if you have something that is lacking an octet at least other than hydrogen, because again, hydrogen should not have an octet. It should only have a duet or two electrons, meaning a single bond. But once you've used up all the valence electrons that you have, you're gonna look and see, does everything else have an octet? And if it doesn't, you're going to be shifting lone pairs. So it won't do you any good to erase bonds and try to move them because everything at least has to have the single bond you've already started with. And so we're gonna work with lone pairs. And you always want to take a lone pair from something that already has an octet, and you want to shift it to share with some atom that is lacking an octet. So you don't just take away a pair and move it all the way across the structure. You would take a pair and instead of leaving it on one individual atom, you would shift it to where it would share 
with that atom and one that is adjacent, adjacent to it that is missing electrons. And that will help both of the atoms to have an octet. And you would do that until everything in the structure has an octet, which that will cause you to then have double bonds, possibly triple bonds, in the structure. And once you're done with that, you should have a valid Lewis structure. But again, that may not be the most stable structure, but that's okay. At the moment, we want to focus on getting a valid Lewis structure, and once you have that valid Lewis structure, you can move on to predicting shapes, which is our ultimate goal. We're going to start off with some examples of some diatomic molecules. And so starting with the first step, we need to count up the number of valence electrons. So we'll go ahead and do that for all three of these. So first we have Br2, so that contains two bromine atoms. And if you look at the periodic table, you'll see bromine is a halogen, so it's in group seven. And so each one brings seven electrons, so two times seven gives me 14 valence electrons. So I'll need 14 electrons in my structure. Next up, I have O2. And oxygen is in group six, so it has six valence electrons. And I have two of those oxygens, so two times six gives me 12 valence electrons. And then lastly, we have HI. If you look at the periodic table, you'll see hydrogen's in group one, so it has one valence. And iodine's in group seven, so it has seven valence. So we're going to have a total of eight valence for that structure. Now next up would be to draw the skeletal structure. So the skeletal structure is just bonding everything with a single bond. And so these are just diatomics, so I just have a single bond between the atoms to start with. And so Br to Br, O to O, and then H to I. And so that's to start with. So on all of these right now, I've used two of my electrons. And so then I need to add the electrons until I've used up all my valence. So on the first one, I have a total of 14, so I have 12 left. So I'll just start with the bromine on the left, and I'll start adding dots to make an octet. So that bromine, I've added three lone pairs, plus it already has a bond, so right now it has eight electrons. And then on the right-hand side for bromine, if I add three more lone pairs, now I've added a total of 12 in addition to the two I started with. So right now I have 14 total electrons and I fulfilled an octet on both of these because on the right hand side it was similar to the left. I put three lone pairs and it already has a bond so it also has an octet. So this structure that I've drawn has 14 total electrons and each bromine has an octet of electrons. So you do have to remember when you're counting for octets um, that the bonds count as two electrons each, and those two electrons count for both of those atoms. So the bromine on the left gets two electrons for that, and the bromine on the right gets two electrons for that, counting towards its octet. But keep in mind those two electrons are being shared. It's not four electrons. Okay, so next up we have our O2, and the O2, we've already used two electrons, so now I have 10 electrons to work with. So again, I'm going to go ahead and just start on the left and put six electrons around that oxygen, so three lone pairs, and that, in addition to the bond, gives it an octet, but now I only have four electrons remaining. And so I can put two lone pairs on the oxygen on the right. So if I do that, now I have 12 electrons in that structure. So I've got the electrons all on there, but the oxygen on the left has an octet, but the one on the right only has six electrons. It only has two lone pairs and a bond. The bond's two electrons, the two lone pairs is four, so that's six electrons. So the one on the right is lacking electrons. 
And so what I need to do to fix that is I need to take from something that does have an octet, which would be the oxygen on the left, right? It does have an octet and I can move that and share it with the oxygen on the right. And so I just shift that. And then what I have is a double bond between those oxygens. And now the oxygen on the left still has two lone pairs left over. And the one on the right still has the two lone pairs. But the one on the left and the one on the right in my drawing have each two lone pairs and two bonds. And so they each have eight electrons, or they have access to eight electrons. Um, because again, that double bond, those four electrons are being shared between the two atoms. So this O double bond O with the two lone pairs on each oxygen, that is my Lewis structure for O2. Now the last one, we have HI. We've already used two electrons to make that single bond. So I have six left. Now, I'm not going to put lone pairs on hydrogen because remember, hydrogen can only have two electrons. So we would go ahead and put the lone pairs around the iodine. And so if I put three lone pairs around that iodine, that's my last six electrons. And so the hydrogen has its single bond like it needs. The iodine has a single bond and three lone pairs making eight electrons. So it has eight electrons and the overall structure has eight electrons like it should. And so that is the Lewis structure for HI. Next, we'll look at some structures that actually have a central atom. So I've got three here for you. And we're going to start with step one of adding up the valence electrons. So this first one, we've got CHCl3. And the carbon brings in four valence, the hydrogen brings in one, and then each of the chlorines brings in seven electrons. So if you total that up, you should get 26 electrons. And so that's what we're going to need in our final structure. Next, we've got Ni3. And so nitrogen brings in five electrons, and each iodine brings in seven. And so here we've got, again, 26 electrons. And then next, we've got CH2O. Carbon gives us four valence. Each hydrogen gives us one, and we have two hydrogens. And then oxygen gives us six, so that totals to 12 electrons. Next step is to draw the skeletal structures, and so we need to be able to identify the central atom, which, as I said before, that's usually what's listed first, um, is the least electronegative atom, and in these it is the atoms that are listed first. So we have carbon as our central atom, we have a hydrogen coming off of it, and we have three chlorines coming off of it. Now, it doesn't matter exactly where you put the H and the three CLs, just so they're all coming off of that carbon. Next, we have the Ni3, so the N is our central atom, and then we have three iodines coming off of it. Again, I put it left, right, and bottom. You could put one on the top. You could kind of angle them differently. That part doesn't matter. Just what the central atom is and what's coming off of it is what matters. And then the last one, CH2O, so we have carbons in the center, we have two hydrogens coming off of it, and an oxygen. So those are our skeletal structures. Next up would be add the remaining electrons. So in this first one, we've used eight electrons because we have four bonds. So now we have 18 electrons remaining. And so we're going to start on the outer atoms. We're going to add to each of those three lone pairs, or at least to the things that need them. So on the bottom chlorine here, I've put three lone pairs. On the chlorine on the right, I've put three lone pairs. And then the last chlorine, I put three lone pairs. And so that's 18 more electrons. So that in total is 26 electrons.
I didn't add any lone pairs to the hydrogen because hydrogen can't have more than a single bond. And I didn't have any remaining to put on the carbon. So I've got all 26 electrons. So next, let's look at the Ni3. We have 26 electrons. Right now I have six on there, so I have 20 more to work with. So if I start with the outer atoms and fulfill their octets, so each of these iodines I put three lone pairs on, then that is 18 of the 20 that I had remaining. So now I have two more electrons. So those two electrons I'll put on the nitrogen because anything extra goes on the central atom. And so that's 26 electrons. Now let's look at the last one. We've got six electrons right now, 12 total. So I have six more to work with. I can't put them on the hydrogens, but I can put six electrons on that oxygen. And so now I have 12 electrons. So that's step three, just adding all of those electrons onto the structure to where you have all the valence on there, nothing extra, you're not missing any. And you fulfill all the octets you can, and if you had anything extra, it would go in the middle. Okay, so now last step is, you know, see if anything's lacking an octet, because if so, you need to shift things. So if we look at this first structure, what you should see is, well, the hydrogen doesn't have an octet, but it shouldn't have one. But each of the chlorines has three lone pairs and one single bond, so they have octets. The carbon has four single bonds, so that is also an octet, meaning that we are done with that structure. We have the right number of electrons, and we have an octet on everything except hydrogen, which shouldn't have one anyway. Then we look at the Ni3, and if you look at the iodines, each of the iodines have three lone pairs and a single bond, so they all have eight electrons. And then the nitrogen has three bonds and one lone pair, so that's eight electrons. So everything in that structure has an octet, and we also have the correct total number of valence electrons. So that is our Lewis structure. Now the last one, you can look and see Hydrogens are each single bonded like they should be. They should not have an octet. The oxygen has three lone pairs and a single bond, so it has an octet. But the carbon, we have a problem because the carbon has three single bonds, which is only six electrons. So it is lacking. So that's where we need to take from something that has an octet, that has lone pairs, and take a lone pair from it and shift it to share. So the oxygen has a lone pair, it has an octet, and it can share that lone pair with the thing that's lacking, the carbon. And so if we do that, now we have hydrogen and hydrogen bonded to carbon, but now I have a double bond to the oxygen, and then that oxygen still has two lone pairs on it. And so now this structure also has 12 electrons like the one above, but this one at the bottom is actually the valid structure because not only does it have the correct number of electrons, but everything that needs an octet has one because now that carbon has four bonds to it making an octet and the oxygen has the two lone pairs, two bonds, making it also an octet. Next, we're gonna look at some polyatomic ions. So we'll again start with step one, adding up the valence electrons. So in this first one, NH4+, or the ammonium ion, we have five valence for our nitrogen, and then each of the hydrogens, which we have four of, each of them gives us one, but then we have a positive charge. That positive charge means we've lost a valence electron. So I'm then going to subtract one from my total. So this is gonna give us eight valence electrons for that structure. The next one, carbonate ion, CO3 two minus. We have four valence for the carbon and then each of the oxygens which there's three of them. Each of them gives us six valence, and then we have a negative two charge. 
that means we have two extra electrons. So I'm going to add two to the valence. So this is going to give us 24 electrons. Next one, we have IO2 minus. That's the iodite ion. And so we have iodine gives us seven valence. Then we have two oxygens. Each of them gives us six valence. And a negative charge means we have one extra. So then we have, what, 20 electrons. And so that's our totals. And so now we need to draw the skeletal structures. So we need to identify the central atom. And as I said before, that's usually what's listed first. And that is the case here as well. So we have nitrogen in the center. We have four hydrogens coming off. And then we have carbon in the center. We have three oxygens coming off. And then we have iodine in the center and two oxygens coming off. And so those are our skeletal formulas. And then, let's see, we need to add on all our remaining electrons. So the first one, we should have eight electrons. Well, right now we have four bonds, that is eight electrons. So we have all the electrons there. Now the next one, um, we have used six electrons, so we have 18 left. So I can put three lone pairs on each of these oxygens, and that would be 18 more electrons. So right now I have the 24 electrons on my structure. And so let's go to the IO2 minus. Right now we have four electrons because two bonds, so we have 16 remaining of the 20. And so I can put the lone pairs on my outer atoms, the oxygens. And so I've added 12 more. And so we have, what, 12, 14, 16. We have four more to go. And so those four extra I'm going to put as two lone pairs on iodine. And so that's 20 electrons on that one. Okay, so now... We go back and make sure everything that needs an octet has an octet. Okay, so in the first one we have hydrogens, which should only be single bonded like they are, and then we have nitrogen, which has an octet. So that one's good. We've got our eight electrons, we have an octet. The next one, let's see, we have three lone pairs and a single bond on each oxygen. So each oxygen has an octet. However, the carbon only has three bonds. And so the carbon right now only has six electrons. So now we need to fix that by taking from something that has an octet. Okay, and so each of those oxygens that, is, that are attached to that carbon have octets. So we can actually take a lone pair from any of those oxygens and share it with carbon. And so what would happen is we could actually get three different resonance structures. We're just going to pick one of them and just draw one. So I'm going to take a pair from the oxygen on the left and share it with the carbon. And so that's going to give me a structure where I've got a double bond to that first oxygen. I have a single bond to the other two. And then each of those single bonded ones still have three lone pairs on them. And the one with the double bond now only has two lone pairs on it. But with that, we have each oxygen with an octet. Because you have a double bond, two lone pairs, that's an octet. Or three lone pairs and a single bond, that's an octet. And a carbon with four bonds to it which is also an octet. And so that has 24 electrons and everything has an octet. And then we can look at the last one. We've got 20 electrons on there. And then, let's see, your oxygens have three lone pairs and a single bond, so that's an octet for those. And then your iodine has two single bonds, two lone pairs, so that's an octet. And so everything's got the right number of electrons and the octets. 
but we are missing one thing from these. All of these substances have charges on them. And so all of these have to be indicated that they have an overall charge. And so what we should do is we place these in square brackets and we put the charge outside. So I put this positive outside the square brackets for my NH4+. And then same with my carbonate ion. I'm going to put that in square brackets and put a charge outside. And then the iodite ion, I do the same. I put that in square brackets and I put the negative one charge there. And so those are our Lewis structures for those polyatomic ions. The final set of compounds we'll look at is organic compounds. So we're going to start with a hydrocarbon, C2H2. And we've got two carbons. Each one gives us four valence. And then we've got two hydrogens. Each one gives us one. So we should have a total of 10 electrons in our structure. So we can draw our skeletal structure. What you need to realize is organic compounds generally have a carbon chain. Um, if you see a subscript with your carbon, that's indicating you know, that you have a chain of carbons. So C2 means I have carbon bonded to carbon. And then the hydrogens that are after that are going to be kind of evenly distributed on the carbons, in this case one on each. And so right now I have three bonds, so that's six electrons. So I have four more electrons to put on there. I can't put them on the hydrogens, but either of the carbons would work. I'm going to go ahead and put two lone pairs on one of those carbons. And that's going to give me my 10 valence electrons. But if you look at that, you've got the right number of electrons, but you've got the carbon on the right is missing electrons. It needs to have an octet, but right now it only has two bonds, which is four electrons. So I'm going to have to take from the carbon that does have an octet and share. So if I take both of those pairs of electrons and share them, what's going to happen is those four electrons that only belong to that carbon now are shared with the other. So not only does the carbon that already had an octet still have an octet, but the other carbon is now going to also have an octet. And so the structure is going to have a triple bond between those carbons. And so then right now I have five bonds, which is 10 electrons, and the hydrogens have a single bond like they need. And the carbons each have four bonds, making them have an octet each. And that means that this is a valid structure. Okay, so now the next one, this one's written a little bit different. This one's written kind of broken down into the pieces of the molecule. So whenever you see that there's hydrogens kind of split up throughout the chemical formula, they're breaking it down for you. Now it's written as CH3 and H2, so that H3 part is written between the carbon and nitrogen, but you can't have hydrogens between things. They have to be on the outside. So those after the carbon are just indicating those are attached to the carbon. And then you have the nitrogen. And so the structure is going to have that CH3 unit than the NH2 unit. And so let's go ahead and add up the valence. You've got a carbon, brings in four. You've got three hydrogens, each brings one. So that's three electrons. And then five for the nitrogen. And then two more hydrogens each bring one, so that's two more. And so that gives us 14 valence for this structure. And our skeletal structure is going to have the carbon bonded to the nitrogen, again because it can't have a hydrogen between them. Uh, you've got the three hydrogens coming off of the carbon and then the two hydrogens coming off of the nitrogen. That's why those are each written after those elements. So that's our skeletal structure. Right now we have six bonds, which means we have 12 electrons. We have two more to go. And so there's no external atoms that can take them because those are all hydrogens. 
Then I have the carbon and nitrogen. The carbon right now has got four bonds, so it has an octet. The nitrogen could use two more, so I'll put the lone pair on there. So now we have 14 electrons, and everything that needs an octet has one, and your hydrogens, you know, have the two that they should have. On to the last one, we have CH3CH2OH. So if we add up the electrons, we have four for carbon, three for the three hydrogens, four for the next carbon, two for the hydrogens, six for the oxygen, and one for the final hydrogen. And so if you add all of that up, you get 20 electrons. And the skeletal structure of that is kind of given to you. You have the CH3, CH2, OH. Those are the three pieces. So you have a carbon attached to a carbon attached to an oxygen. And the first carbon has three hydrogens coming off. The second carbon has two hydrogens coming off. And then the oxygen has a hydrogen coming off. And so right now we have eight bonds. And so that means we've used up 16 of our electrons, meaning we have four more to go. And all of our external atoms are hydrogens, so we can't add electrons to those. The two carbons each already have an octet because they each already have four bonds. Then the oxygen only has two bonds, so we can add our two lone pairs to that oxygen, and that's going to give that oxygen an octet. So now we have a structure that has 20 electrons like it should, and everything that needs an octet has one. So that's a valid structure.